Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity roguelike tutorial. In this one we're going to be covering how to set up the player stats, making a static class and then ending up with having enemy health bars so we know how much health they're on before they die. Um, we're going to start off with the player stats. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to say is we're not going to put the player stats script on the player. That's not a good thing to do because the problem is if you've got any code on there, that gets called like after the player dies to do something. Well, since the player's dead and the object's gone, you kind of kind of screwed. So, we're going to make a game manager object, which is going to be there available in every single scene. It's going to go from one scene to the next. It's not going to get destroyed, and we're going to um, basically just uh, put everything on there that needs to be happening all the time and not like be reliant on the enemy being alive or dead because otherwise it can cause problems. So. Let's create an empty game object called Game Manager. And we're gonna just center it, it doesn't matter at all where it is to be honest. And then we're gonna say we want to make the player stat script on here. Now, did I not delete that when I was messing around earlier? I'm guessing I didn't. Scripts. Wait, what? Game Manager. It's right there. Anyway, um, so let's do that again. Let's remake this script. So, play stats. <laughs> Compiling. Why does it not want me to make this? Come on. Play stats. Okay, and we're not going to stick that onto the player. We're going to stick it onto the game manager, which is where it is right now. Um, let's drop it into our scripts folder. And for this, we're actually going to, well, first of all, open up player stats in Visual Studio. And then we're going to open up enemy stats. And we're just going to go and copy all of this. And then we're going to change parts. Um, so it's, our player's going to have health, max health. He's going to start off with his health at the max health. He's going to have a thing for taking damage, for e healing, whatever. We're actually going to add one here. We're going to have public void. Instead of deal damage, we'll have a um, like heal uh, character. We'll take in a float for the amount we're going to heal. And then we'll say uh, health plus equals heal. And we're going to check over heal. I didn't do that last time, I forgot. So we're going to put that into the um, enemy stats as well. So there you go, they're both the same currently. Now we want to do the different things. So we can close the enemy ones for now. On the player stats, we want a way to, um, well, we're going to make it so the projectiles, when they collide with the player, we're going to make it so it's going to run this function, the deal damage one. We need a way for the player stats to, first of all, know what the player is. So we're going to set, because at the moment, when we when we check death, we're not going to destroy the game manager. We're actually going to destroy the player. So let's just do destroy player. And we're going to make a public game object player. That's what we're going to destroy um, when we die. And then we're going to actually make this class static. And a static class is a class that you can only have one of. It's the only one that there is. And if you try and make another one, it'll cause problems. The only You're only allowed one. The benefit is it's a lot easier to reference it because it's the only one that exists. So you don't need to tell it which one to get. The disadvantage being you can't reuse like you know the class elsewhere. But if you don't need to, then you know, it's not a problem. So we're going to say public static of type player stats, which is the class, and we're going to just call it, you know, player stats. Now, we need to set it somewhere. We're going to set it in the awake before everything else happens, because awake is just the same as start, but it happens before the start. Um, in awake, we're going to say player stats is equal to this. Uh, whoops which means we're saying the instance class is this one. In my next video, I'll cover, I'll like add at the start something about um, keeping this, you know, if we go to a next scene, then this will stay, this object is gonna still be there. I could just do that now. I could just say, don't destroy and load this. But the only problem now is that if I was to try and make a separate version of this class, like some other object with it on, it would cause errors. I'll show you how to go around that next episode. It's not going to be a problem for us until we actually have multiple scenes. Um, it shouldn't really be a problem anyway. It's kind of like a safety thing. So this this will work for now. Um, it's always best though to check, you know, if it. Well, we'll we could do it now. We'll say um, if player player 
sorry, player stats is not null. I can't type. Is not null. So basically, you know, if it already exists, then we want to destroy um, player stats. This, um, like this version of it. Then we'll say else. So basically, now if it doesn't already exist, um, we don't need to check anything. Just else um, player stats is equal to this. There we go. That's just the, the check, so we don't get any problems. So anyway, now when we run the scene, keep in mind we haven't actually made the projectiles deal any damage yet, um, or even collide with the player. Well, they might collide with the player, but they don't do anything. Um, so if we go into Game Manager, it actually goes into its own thing on here called Don't Destroy and Load, which is where everything that you know doesn't get destroyed goes. Um, just showing that. Now we need to go to the Game Manager and give it the player prefab and give the player some health. So we'll say, for now he has 50 health. We don't need to set the actual health value because as soon as we start the game, it's gonna be set to 50 anyway. Um, then if we go to the enemy projectile script, we wanna say, instead of just destroying the projectile when it collides with the enemy, we wanna then check if collision.tag is equal to player. So the thing we're colliding with you know, is the player or something the player summons. So if we have a, the player summoning, like, you know, anything, uh, we can tag it with player, which just means that the enemy's things do collide with it as well. Um, so if it's the player, then we'll say, um, we don't wanna, we can't get a script from the player. We, because the script for the health isn't on the player, we're gonna just deal it to the manager. So we'll say player stats dot, and then the variable player stats dot deal damage, and we'll pass in damage. So we're gonna call this function deal damage in here. We're gonna you know, pass in the amount of damage we wanna deal. It's gonna take off the health and then check if it's dead or not. And then if it is dead, it'll kill it. Um, remember, we're killing the um, player, not the actual script, not this. Um, so now we want to, first of all, tag the player with, you know, the player tag, otherwise that's not gonna do anything. So player and tag and player. Oh, I must've already done that. Uh, then we want to also, we've tagged the enemies, we want to actually tag the enemy projectiles because if an enemy projectile hits another enemy projectile, currently they're going to get destroyed. So we'll tag it with enemy. Um, and now, now we'll press play maybe. No, we also need to give the enemies an actual amount of damage to deal. So the min damage, well our player's got 50 health, so let's just go for between 5 and 10 damage every hit. Let's see how that works. We should die. I'm not going to bother dodging because I want to actually take damage. So look, we're on 50 health. And we're on 4 health now. When I make the UI, I'm going to round the value so that, there we go, we're dead. Now, this could cause problems in the sense that it now, once the player's dead, it says, you know, this is this is missing. So, um, we could say, well, check death will never get called again because the player's gone. Oh, he'll be, yeah, none of this is ever going to be cold because nothing yeah it's fine because all these rely on the player actually you know getting hit and if the player's not there you can't get hit so this is actually okay um though on the players on the enemy sorry test uh spell when they try and get the um sorry that's the that's my spell uh on the test enemy shooting uh yeah, I already check actually if the player's alive for it to work. So that's all good. I did those checks previously. That's good. Didn't even think about it. I'd already done them. Uh, so now the player can get shot and die. That's that's part of the video done. And then the second part, I'm going to show an enemy, the enemy health bars on screen. So let's let's pick one of the enemies because once we've done it to one, we can just apply the prefab. So we're going to right click on the enemy, create a UI canvas on them. There we go. UI canvas. Now the thing is. There's different kinds of canvas. You have overlay, camera, world space. World space, as you can guess, means the the health bar is then in the world, whereas overlay means it's on the UI. Now, to be honest with you, we could for, for a 2D game you could do either, because in a 3D game you want the health bars to be in the world and move with the enemies. But because this is a 2D game, I feel like actually world space is best for this. If people think otherwise, then just tell me. But I'm gonna go for world space. And then we're going to add a UI slider because sliders is generally how you do um, generally how you do health bars. Now, if we for some reason this isn't actually at the player right now, oh no! So this is just a big slider, is what we're looking at. 
as you can see. So let's just scale all the way down. And we're working with a very, very small 2D game. Uh, let's just. There we go. Now, you might want to tweak things with it now that we've got it where it is. So, the health bar, you probably want to be a bit taller. And obviously a bit higher. Whoops, that went up very quickly. So maybe like there. Uh, I don't know, tweak it to how you want to be. And then we're going to just change some things in there. So we'll call this um, slider right, health bar. Um, so the uh, handle we can just get rid of, to be honest. Uh, and then let's just make this all zero 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 zero. We'll set the background color to be red. And if we go to the slider, well, if this is full health, then we actually want this to be red. Fill area, health bar, normal color. Okay, we could set it to red and then we could say the background color is just full transparent um, so that when they start to lose health, you know, they die. Like, so we're looking in the game view now. That could be an enemy's health bar and then as they lose health, it's like that and then they die. Um, obviously, you might not want the health to work like this. Just tweak the slider to how you want it to be. But the best thing to do is make sure your value is between zero and one because that could be between 0 and 100%. That's how I'm going to do it. So, um, obviously, if we then go to the enemy and apply this, then they'll all have them. Uh, you might also want it so health bars only appear once they've taken damage. So you could do that, and I might do that as well, actually. Um, so let's minimize this and this. Yeah. Okay, so now we can actually disable the... Um, health bar. Make sure that canvas is on there. So the health bars are there, they're just disabled because we haven't hit the enemies yet. Now, in the enemy script, let's say we've got the enemy health script here. So, we're going to have a public game object health bar. And then we'll have a we have to actually be using, we have to use a library for the UI sliders, so using uh, unity engine dot UI and then we'll say uh, public slider equals um, well health bar slider and then is that not working why did I put equals sorry that's my bad um, so we're gonna drag those in then what do we want to do with them well we want to say when we uh, take damage to this enemy we want to say um, well technically anytime we uh, take damage we, the first time we take damage we want to say um, enable it and to be honest we could just enable it every time we don't need to check if it's already off because we're just going to set it to enabled so we'll say health bar dot enabled uh, dot is active it's a game object so dot why is it not wanting to let me do anything with it health bar dot Hmm. What am I doing? Um, health bar equals. So it's a game object. Usually you can do dot set active. Oh, you can. What? <laughs> but did I was I just not typing that? I'm just being silly. All right. So yeah, we set the health bar to active, which means we can see it. And then every time we take damage, we also want to say, um, we'll have a function down here, a private void, no, sorry, a private um, float, uh, you know, calculate health 
percentage, I don't know, and it takes in a, um, well, it doesn't actually take in anything. We just want to say um, return health divided by max health, like so. So we're returning the value of the health divided by the max health, which is going to be, you know, the value between zero and one. If we're on full health, it's going to return one. If we're on low health, it's going to return zero. If we're on half health, 0 0.5. And then we want to set the slider value to that. So every time we take damage, we want to say um, slider, health bar slider dot value is equal to calculate health percentage. So we just run it in whatever the value is, we'll set it. We also want that to do when we heal. So we're going to say, um, well, actually, we actually want to do it. I've got a better idea. Is when we uh, check heal and check death. Because if we set it here, if we don't, if we do it just in the heal and we overheal, then the bar's going to go above heal. Uh, oh, I'm just being. Sorry, I don't know why. You can do this however you want, to be honest. There's better ways. I'm just thinking, what do I want to do? We could just wait till the end of the function when it's like actually calculated how much health or if we're dead or not, and then we set it. So if we're dead, it's just, yeah. Um, now, to be honest, I think that's done. So let's just uh, drag these things in. So uh, enemy received damage. We want to go to this enemy's health bar and drag it into both because the top one was dragging in the health bar um, item like thing. And then this one we're dragging in the slider. The reason why we're not setting the canvas active or not is if we have some other kind of UI thing for the enemy, I don't know what we would have, but just say we did, then we don't want to set it for other things. Um, let's have a look. There we go. Pew. So now we can start damaging the different enemies and you know, it works. So, hey, there we go. Uh, I'm just wondering why the camera thing isn't working. I did that last video. Uh, let me just see. Camera, follow player. Oh, the smoothing is set to 0. Um, 0 0.05. Why did I turn that off, I wonder? There we go then. Okay, so that's the video done, 17 minutes, covered quite a bit of stuff. Um, obviously, if you want to see more of this series, then you know, like and subscribe, it would help a lot. Comment what you want me to cover in particular. Um, I hope I'm covering the kind of stuff you want to see, and you know, I can't just miss this stuff out. All the stuff I'm doing is quite important anyway for the game. Um, but yes, obviously, ask whatever you want to see. If you want to join our Discord server in the description and you know, discuss uh, anything game-related or Unity-related, you know, coding related in general. We've got channels for different languages and things. And we've got a community of people who, you know, actively ask questions and respond to each other. And it's just a good place to be if you want to be there. Um, but yeah, so I think that's the video done. Yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.